We need to work with you on a couple of areas. Number one, on the fertilizer subsidy, and I agree with uh, Governor Lusaka that uh, that's a program that must be by operation done between the two levels of government so that we avoid duplication and we avoid uh, unnecessary, you know, or we actually share resources. We, we actually benefit if we bring the county infrastructure into this exercise because we get additional resources, people who are already paid for, they are working already in the counties. So it, it gives us, a, it, it's good for us. So we would um, value uh, the input of the counties and uh, we will make sure, as uh, Deputy President has said, that we, in, we involve you. This administration is going to work with the Council of Governors, in accordance with the law and the constitution. It is not a choice that I make or a choice that governors make or a choice that any political party makes. It is by operation of the constitution. The constitution directs us to work together in collaboration and in concurrence with the law and the constitution. So I want to assure um, our governors, as I do our members of parliament, that we are going to respect what the constitution expects of us and what the law expects of us. We need a conversation on uh, the vocational training because if we don't get it right at the bottom, at the vocational training center. It will affect even our TVET and the whole uh, technical training trajectory. Um, I have asked some of our technical universities to develop curriculum for the training of trainers, um, especially for our TVETs. And I think that should include the training of trainers for our vocational training centers at the county level. We have identified at least three or four dams in every county. We're going to uh, work with you. Uh, you can discuss again uh, with uh, Alice Wahome, our CS, and her team on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the dams we have zeroed in on. Uh, you can make suggestions on, um, uh, from where you sit on what you think can be part of our priority list. Uh, work with our teams on the ground. Uh, because aside from the larger dams, we also want to do the smaller dams, and we are targeting almost a thousand small dams across the country. So. That's an exercise we want to work together with you. That is excellent said while concluding your address. Please give a small pep talk because it's not everybody here that has interacted with members of parliament and know what needs to be done in appearance before uh, members of parliament. I am so pleased by the uh, remarks that you made, uh, Your Excellency the Deputy President, about relationship between leaders and members of the cabinet. You know, uh, uh, late last year, in the month of December, we went to Juba for the annual parliamentary games. Uh, and we were playing with members of uh, the uh, South Sudan National Transition Parliament. And something, uh, we, we learned a lesson there. Every member of the team, virtually almost every player, was a general. So the game begins and a general, so the announcer was, an, uh, the person who was commentating the match says, oh, General Mabior passes the ball to General so and so. So we went and asked them a question. How comes in this country almost everybody is a general? And they told us a question, they told us that uh, this government was acquired through a struggle. And since we didn't have so much to give to everybody, we said at least let's give them honor so that they feel that they have been recognized by this administration. I feel, and I say this respectfully, that this administration also was born out of a fruit of struggle. And that's in essence what you're saying. So sometimes as a cabinet secretary, while you might be saying the members of parliament who are coming to your offices to want to meet you, and you say, ah, these politicians, uh, 
are taking a lot of our time and think, you know, in, in the mind of the fellow who's seated in a waiting room, he's a general who wears the marks of the struggle. And he looks at you as a beneficiary of the struggle that he partook in, but cannot enjoy uh, the benefit. What National Assembly uh, represents and what Senate represents, our interests are completely different. Senate, uh, and I think I'll read it somewhere, it's somewhere further down my presentation. Our worldview is completely different. We view things from the Senate with the lens of devolution. How is it going to impact our counties? Is it good for devolution? While our colleagues in the National Assembly, and you've heard the confessions earlier of members who have served in the National Assembly, how they view things. Therefore, your response to questions in both houses is important. You may give the same answer, but chances are very high. You are not likely to get the same response or appreciation of the issues by the both sets of houses. Therefore, it is important. In instances where matters raised by houses are similar, uh, because you want to save on time also sometimes, then we, it will be prudent that we have this, uh, we will also provide for this mechanism that you appear before a committee, a joint committee actually, of both houses, if it's a matter of greater national interest and we want to put you together so that we save you the time. We also uh, understand the kind of uh, work that you have. So what matters may be considered, like I had mentioned earlier, what is it that you come to mention? Of course, there are three things that we, uh, uh, we, we feel is important for you to come and respond to. One, uh, it has to be a matter of government policy. Two, a question of great national importance. Of course, we don't expect that when you come, a member will just shoot up and say, hey, uh, my neighbor's cows are missing, your minister for internal security, Kindiki, where are my cows? Or things like that. It has to be a matter of great national importance. So you see, we are, we, we, we are also providing a cover for you as a cabinet minister so that when you appear, there are things that are of good order to you. Of course, it has to be something also of great public interest, not personal interest. You know, not something that means uh, something to me as a senator, but nothing to the public. So those three uh, mechanisms will be the guiding. Uh, we, will, we will actually set the, uh, a threshold of what qualifies uh, to be a question that can be brought before you. Now, Tali, tourism and wildlife. The accused uh, constitution contemplates attendance before a committee of either the National Assembly or the Senate when required by the committee. This competence uh, now as Parliament the powers also to legislate and make decisions of how we want to study. The Honorable Dan Wanyama, whenever you shake your hand, you must be free to be yours. Karaoke, uh, transport, the Honorable Aji, that is Commissioner. Uh, with all our interests that we are able to process bills and commissions, especially bills that we know. Statements, uh, written statements that have been placed by members who come before the various uh, committees of parliament. That's the first is that by and large, uh, most of you know. But the system that we've seen introduced and our schematic. What are these matters that can be under the control? Thank you.